All right, guys, what is going on? Today, we're going to be talking about five easy ways to make money with ChatGPT. And we got myself, RJ, here, and then we got D. What's up, guys? Holler. What is going on? So, <clears throat> um, first things first, uh, you have anything anything to add, anything to, before we jump into this? And getting no, man, I'm, I'm excited to jump right into it. I think it's going to be, like, dope to talk about because we've been playing around with ChatGPT. And we've been having so much fun coming up with new different things and doing different ways to make money. So we're just going to share it with y'all. <laughs> and also, too, guys, if you guys get any value or anything out of this video, make sure you guys give this a thumbs up because it helps us. So first things first, um, I'm going to go ahead and share on my screen. Share screen. I'm going to come over which window. Okay. window let me share this one first so for example okay we're going straight into uh chat gtp and uh one of the things let me come over click on new chat okay i had a prompt already saved um one thing i want to talk about is using kdp okay with chat gtp okay kindle direct publishing and creating low content books all right, um, you can see right here, I have the little prompt, short stories for kids, eight to 10 about animals and create five unique titles for each story, okay? And uh, basically what this is going to do is it's gonna give us some ideas about how to come up with different title ideas, okay? Um, one thing I always recommend is always do your research. When you're doing your research, can you see the screen, D? Yeah. Or which one are you looking at? Uh, what is the thing is I'm looking at the, the one that's live. I'm looking at okay. not the not the broadcast, but what we're doing right now. <laughs> okay, but uh, the are you looking at Chat GTP or are you looking at Amazon? I'm looking at Chat GPT. Okay, one second, one second. Let me get let me stop sharing the screen because I messed it up again. Okay, <laughs> if you guys have any questions, also too, don't be scared. Don't be afraid to ask. Um, I'm gonna go back over here, share the screen again. Can can you see Amazon now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's what I was trying to like, I was like, what the heck? Um, so for example, always do your research when it comes to anything like this, like so short stories for kids, right? And just get an idea of like, you know, come in here and see what's going on, see what's selling. Um, there's different, like there's obviously different types of ideas in here. Okay. When it comes to any of this stuff. And I always recommend, okay. We, when it comes to any of these AI writing tools, the goal is for it to assist you and help you write these stories. And if you Absolutely. don't understand that, you're going to have a hard time in this space because I don't want you to be whatever it puts out to you. Don't copy and paste it into, you know, creating your book. Kind of do a little bit of uh, creativity and human power behind it, too. It's like doing all the pretty much all the heavy lifting, say like 80 percent of all the heavy lifting. But it's your job to go in there and edit and, you know, make it like it's like it's your story, like you're proud of it. Right. And that's one thing. And, and and if you have to outsource and find somebody like a writer or something to help you with this, do so. OK, um, that's one way that me personally, when it comes to any of this stuff is outsourcing and 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 trying to scale it to that next level. And I've taught many, many pe people over the years uh, that to help them understand this. Right. And help them grow their business. But there's so many different things that can be done over here. Right. Mm -hmm. And you got a uh, inspiring stories for amazing kids. Right. And uh, they're selling this paperback book for eleven ninety, okay, eleven dollars ninety cents, um, and th there's a ton more, okay. Uh, short stories for kids for children four to twelve years old. Uh, you got animals, the animals edition. You see what they did there. Bedtime stories for kids, okay. If you give a mouse a cookie. Uh, empowering stories for amazing girls. This one right here, it's a. Uh, you can see the ratings on it. it's doing pretty good it's making sales cranking um there's a few different ones right here very simple too nothing too crazy with these covers anyone can create these type of covers it's like don't be oh how can i do this and you know even looking into mid journey right and using chat G gtp to help you you know create uh the images and then obviously create creating the story is one way too um so for example so we come over here kind of get an idea of what's going on we hit this prompt right here, short stories for kids, eight to 10 about animals, create five unique titles for each story. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that enter button. Now you're you're on a paid version of chat GPT, right? No, this one's the free. Okay, okay. 
the paid version that I have personally is uh, the Jasper. Oh, I got you. That's the one. Yeah. I, you got now, the paid you version already? More than chat GPT. Like, do you find there's differences? Um, I don't know. I test both of them out, but I use both, like I use both when it comes to like creating descriptions and, and, and stuff like that. Like the workflow, they have like different templates for different workflows over there, which is really cool. Um, and you can create like a, you can create a lot over there pretty fast. Cool, cool. So it's, I don't know, like they have, they have templates over there that are ready for you. Now, you know, with chat GTP, um, there's, uh, there's different templates over here too, as well. Right. That one tool that I showed you that you can use, but I'm not sure if the upgraded version has that available. I haven't messed with it. The plus. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's coming up with, uh, you know, one story. So it's actually writing you the full story. <laughs> it is too. God, we're spoiled. Right? Spoiled rotten. Mm -hmm. But this is cool because if you look at it, like it's coming with everything for you, right? Mm -hmm. And it's doing all the heavy lifting, but... Okay, we got story two now. We got story one's the brave little mouse. Story two is the clever fox with with the greedy farmer. This is taking a little bit longer than I thought, but you know what? Like this right here is like crazy because it's it gave us Give us like a so we have the story with one title, but then it gave us five other titles, right? Yeah, which is crazy. I might as well just create a uh, prompt for this in the back end, share it publicly with the you know, in that um, the AI PRM for chat GTP, yeah, yeah. Freddy the Fox Veggie. Slave Fox and the Farmer Feast. Fox versus Farmer and Battle of Wits. This is cool. So as it's doing this, guys, one thing that I've always like when it comes to any of this stuff, like, okay, plagiarism, right? This is something that's a topic. And I want to show you exactly what like what free tool that you can use um, over here with Grammarly. Like this you can copy anything in here okay let's say that you're writing and you know and you just want to double check everything i always recommend that you double check and you use this grammarly tool um i'll share that within in the comments in a bit but this right here is like you, when you're when you're writing and stuff like that you want to put it in here and scan it and making sure and double check everything that you're doing okay like even if you're working let's say for example like something i've been doing over the years even though i work with different artists and stuff i always check their work because i don't like at the end of the day, it's your job. Like if something mm -hmm. happens to what your business or whatever happens, or you get a strike or something like that, it's your job to understand what happened and make sure it doesn't happen again. Try as best as possible not to make it like not, not to let it happen again. Okay. Cause as you're growing and you're doing stuff, sometimes, you know, you get a little sloppy and people get sloppy and then boom, you like, Oh dude, I didn't even check that. I didn't even think to check that. So make, make sure that you're on top of this. We're all human, okay? When it comes to any of this stuff, we all make mistakes and there's nothing wrong with that. But understanding that, you know, checking for plagiarism and that you're making sure that you're not stealing anyone else's work is very important when it comes to any of this stuff. Um, so we're on story four. <laughs> anything to add to that, D? No, man, like I think you're just hitting, you're hitting all the, the points, right? So a lot of people, like the questions that pop up, I guess maybe that's what we should do. A lot of people, when it comes to using chat GPT or like really any AI tool for their business, they're kind of afraid of, oh, like the plagiarism or they think, oh, the, the tool is just copying things off the internet and like mashing it together. And it's not actually like real human sounding text or whatever. And as you can see, like using the tool here, that that's not actually the, the case at all. It's it's very much sounding like a human wrote this, right? And mm -hmm. in this case, like this one's taking a little bit longer, I think probably because there's lots of people on the tool right now, which is why it's, it's being a little bit slower. But here you got five ideas. And so it's like, 
people are like, well, how do I make money with chat GPT? Well, here's an easy way, right? Like low content books on KDP to RJ's point can sell like hotcakes. Like he, he shared a video recently where he was talking about, he made something like over $9,000 in books in December and book sales. You know what I'm saying? So people don't, realize just how powerful these tools are like if this can even so let's say like you're like yeah i'm gonna come in i'm gonna look at chat gpt to do some low content books for kdp okay mm -hmm. right now it's already giving you these story ideas it's giving you five different titles that you could use and then it's really easy for you to kind of expand from a place of like this basis right Mm -hmm. If you have to sit down and you have to like research and then you have to try to figure it out, well, what story? I'm not a good writer. What word should I use? Like, you know, how should the story progress? How long should it be? All of those kinds of things, right? Like you're going to spend a lot long, lot longer of a time than if you're just literally typing this into chat GPT and coming up with a basis, like a starting place, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you have that starting place, like you can add on, you can shave down, you can do whatever you need to do. But like it's it's taking the heavy lifting out of of the work here a little bit. You know what I mean? Where it's giving you that starting place for that story. It's giving you the five different titles that can give you ideas for your cover. You know what I mean? And then like you can just look into these other children's books to get like ideas for fonts and graphics and things like that to make that book the best it can be. But I don't know anywhere else where you're just going to sit down and type in something and it's going to spit out five good ideas. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's a really easy way to get started. That's one fast way to start making cash with chat GPT. And it's, it's really like, honestly, kind of low effort. Like it's not mm -hmm. even a really high effort or high skill set activity that you have to be, you know, engaged in here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another thing too, is like, you see like stuff like that, like, it's, this is another thing. It's like, it's low effort. Right. And it's like, Oh, it's easy to do. And you can just copy and do this and do that. But like at the end of the day, like if everyone else is going to be doing that and what's going to make you different from everyone else. Right. So that's a, that's a, that's a challenge in itself for you as an individual to figure that out on your own. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like showing you the steps and showing you how it's, how it's going to be done. But then like sitting there and like complaining, like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's more of, Okay, what can I do to make this better than everyone else on the front page, right? Like, or or on that on that first page of Amazon.com, right? And what is it going to take? Okay, and that's mm -hmm. one thing that I've always asked myself personally. It's like, can I create this the best book in this niche that's going to stand out from everyone else and be the best? That's my main goal. Yeah, so, for sure, that makes sense. Hey, the, hey, so we we've been talking about squirrels all day. Uh, so we're gonna take we're gonna take I put a little prop take story three write a five hundred word story okay, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna go ahead and hit enter okay we're taking this right here, uh, Sammy, the squirrel. Oh, what happened? I broke it. Oh yeah, it said because it's taking a long time, eh? I feel uh -huh. like it's uh, it's got high high users on right now. Yeah, I think oh, that too. Fresh. It's going to kick me now. It shouldn't. If you're already on it, usually let you right back in and then you can pick up from that story. There you go. Okay. So take story three. And let's see what happens. That is. You can still see my screen, right? I'm not yep. breaking nothing. Okay. No. Yep. The power. Yeah. And this is the thing, right? Like people buy these kids' books. Kids love books, right? Like, I feel like kids have like this little imagination. Almost all the kids have their, like, they're just so rooted in creative and like playful thought because of mm -hmm. the age, right? And so they have like these big imaginations. And so they love these stories, right? Because I feel like even if the story comes with like a picture book or whatever, they're kind of like making their own little movie about their characters that are in these stories in their heads. And so they can get really attached and it can become like a whole thing like like I I look back on some of this stuff and this is the power of this kind of tool right because mm -hmm. I look back on some of the stories that like I loved when I was a little girl and they're still like hallmarks of my childhood you know what I mean like where or like even some of the dolls that I had when I was like really little you know like they were they were my go-to things you know yeah. what I mean? and I had like such an emotional 
attachment to all of those things. And that was why like my mom kept buying like that series of books or that series of dolls, right? Because yeah. I was like so emotionally attached to them. They were like my little friends in my, you know, kid like imagination brain. So it's just, it's cool to see like now we've progressed into these AI tools and like an AI tool can come up with like the bare bones of a compelling story that'll be interesting for kids. Um, but that you can also very easily use to to make some money on KDP. Yep. No, no. So it, look at we put right 500 words. It came up with 448 words, which is really cool. Right. So but then you want to add more to it. I think adding more to it, editing a few things, make it a, oh, completely different from, you know, everything, you know, everything like everything in that niche. So if you go into like the, the storybooks about squirrels or just, you know, you want to create a, a totally different book about a squirrel named Sammy, you can do so. Right. Mm -hmm. You see those standalone books that are just just different, more creative as far as, you know, the images and stuff like that, stuff like that yeah. can be done and which is very powerful. So, so, um, no, Amazon, so chat GTP and Amazon KDP, right? Those are like adding those two and creating books and coming up with different ideas for books. That's very powerful because you can, you can create a lot of money over there. And then once you get like a bestseller in a niche, like that book is going to sell pretty much you know, you can, I had one book that did over 2,500, 25, just one book sold 2,500 times in December, which is really crazy. And it was like rank 900 and I think it was like 75 BSR, which is amazing. Cause I'm just like, wow, Amazon was created off of books and I, I accomplished that. And I was like, that's, that's a really amazing, amazing accomplishment for me personally, but I get the concept and get the idea of it. Okay. Now it's your job to put it into use, to understand it and then just be the best. Okay. And try to, you know, make it work for you. Is there any questions at all? Well, Ahmed's asking if you have any videos um, about making merch by Amazon ads. Or merch by merch Amazon ads. ads. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I do. On uh, Over on my YouTube channel, I have a, a playlist. I'll be creating more of that content this year too as well. I know that's a, a big question that's being asked. Um, do you, you know, do you have any? Yes, I do. I do on my channel right now, but there's more like newer ones that I have to create. So I'll be creating some of those. So uh, let me, you can, if you don't know where that is, let me grab that real fast. Eh? Yeah. Uh, and then Lorelei is asking, what is the link for the free chat GPT? And I believe it's just like chat.ai. That's something in it. What is it? Yeah, chat.openai.com. Mm. Okay. Right there. That's the link right now. That plagiarism check, make sure you're using, you know, you're double checking all your work and that you're not doing anything, anything. Yeah, funky. there's a bunch of different tools that are free. I just dropped one in the chat for you, RJ, if you want to copy that one. But you can go on Grammarly for that tool too. Yeah, perfect. So Grammarly has the the plagiarism checker, which will let you know if that content has been made before. And then on top of that, like there's another one, Copy AI has a paraphrasing tool that you can use basically to rewrite some of the sections of what comes out, the output of ChatGPT, um, so that it's even further away from just, you know, the canned response that comes out of the, the tool itself. So. So yeah, so then the next way we were talking about was basically, so like that was number one. Number one was to make uh, low content books using Kindle Direct Publishing, which is an Amazon um, publishing tool, basically allows you to self-publish books, um, low content, no content, um, long form, whatever, and mm -hmm. customers can buy them and support you as an author um, using the Kindle Direct Publishing platform. So the next one is blog posts, right? So um, blog posts and adding an affiliate links or like doing a deep dive on how to use specific things that you've purchased online. So um, Arjun and I are both part of actually the Amazon influencer thing where like you can leave reviews, right? Like mm -hmm. your, your video reviews. And if your video reviews get a certain number of views, then Amazon basically will monetize you or pay you um, for those views that your video reviews get. So that could be a whole other avenue to the blog thing. 
but how you would basically work this. So let's say, let's pick a completely separate niche that we have not talked about today. So let's talk about, um, I don't know, let's talk about interior design. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and let's talk about bohemian style interior design. Okay. So like boho. Okay. Yeah. So if we are, let's say, um, somebody who has a store selling boho moms t-shirts. Okay. So it's a very specific niche. It's boho. They have to have kids. And let's say like it's, it's boho moms of young children. Like it's not boho moms of like 18 year olds who are like 50 something. We're, we're targeting, let's say 25 to 30 year old people. So we have this, this shirt shop that sells boho designs. Maybe it's not just shirts. Maybe we also sell some mugs, some tumblers, some downloadable wall art. Okay. Let's say that, that that's the four product types that are in our store. And now we're trying to generate traffic to that store with like inbound traffic. So basically you're, you're trying to get these blog posts out there, whether they be on social media. Well, that's the, the easiest place to put them like Pinterest, um, link them onto TikTok and work on your backlinking strategy, like getting them linked out on other different platforms of different um, creators in the same niche, right? So what you can do in chat GPT is you can come in and you can start asking it specific questions or giving it specific prompts. So if that's the idea, you're trying to sell more of your boho wares to this boho mom group, like basically maybe one of the first questions, if you don't know that niche as well as you had hoped, is to kind of figure out what other things boho moms like. So if you actually go into chat GPT and you type that question in, to the prompt, it's going to spit out a bunch of other things that people who are into a bohemian lifestyle or into a bohemian interior design style also may like, right? And then from there, it's easy for you to just kind of pick one of those things and then like put that title, just copy that title in and say, make me a blog post about X, right? So let's say for instance, um, it is like cute summer outfits to wear for boho moms, right? Like maybe that's the, and you're going to put some links to affiliate products that you have through Amazon or whatever, um, or cute ways to decorate your back porch this summer for boho moms, right? Like ways that kids aren't going to destroy and you're going to link a bunch of products that you have on Amazon because you have some sort of like affiliate account or any products really. Um, basically, you're just going to copy and paste that title into ChatGPT. You're going to ask it to write you that blog post. You're going to then massage that blog post so that it makes sense based on the things that you plan to feature, whether it's like pillows, outfits, you know, um, home decor that you get an affiliate income off of, whatever it is that you're trying to sell. And then you're going to basically create a nice graphic for Pinterest you're going to research probably still using chat GPT or one of your niche research tools, um, the keywords that you need in order to rank on something like Pinterest or wherever it is that you intend to share that blog. You can make it into a mini vlog where you count out the five things, um, like five ways to make your, your backyard boho this summer, right? And you get do a one, two, three, four, five in that video, like those very tight, quick TikTok videos or reels. And then in your caption, you're saying to hear more about this or to read more about this, check it out on my website. And you're linking over to that blog post and boom, all of a sudden you've got some in internal traffic generating, right? Inbound traffic coming into your website. So that's another easy way. Um, it's basically using chat GPT to do again, most of that heavy lifting, the most of the work that you're going to have to do is figure out the prompts that yeah. work for your specific business that give you the best content possible. And then figure out the graphic that you're going to use, um, which is usually pretty easy if you have an idea in your head of what it is that you're already trying to sell. You just make a graphic with all of those pieces in like a cohesive way that it looks like people like who actually look at that graphic straight off are going mm -hmm. to know exactly what you're trying to sell or exactly what it is that you're talking about with that specific set of items, right? And then you yeah. basically just post that on Pinterest, on TikTok, on Instagram. And then like all of a sudden you're you're generating that traffic to your shop or whatever with those links, um, those affiliate links active, right? 
another so like basically we actually just covered number two number three in one go there it was blog was and social <laughs> captions right? let me let me let me share this one with you real fast like uh so for example let me share my screen one more time that way you can knock out um one and two but share share, share uh both examples like with the screen share so you guys can see exactly yeah. um everything that we just basically went over um d went over so check this out i'm gonna come over here to i'm over here in chat uh chat gtp and then i am going to use this tool right here it's a free chrome extension um i'll share this um in the in the in the comments with you guys but i'm not sure if you guys and there's over 300,000 users on this users on this now so you're probably watching this it's a a a i p r m for chat g p t okay now if we you know, the, you install this Chrome extension, right? And it gives you public prompts. And then you can obviously create your own uh, prompt templates too. Uh, but for the most part, like let's say, for example, um, there was a one right here, right here. This one right here it says uh, human right, uh, writing, writing uh, plagiarism free SEO optimized article for you with proper outline to a uh, thousand plus words. Okay. Upgraded version. Okay. Well, it says, so if you upgrade to the, you know, the upgraded version, let's say, for example, I have a YouTube video. Okay. And let's see how this one does. I know this is a little bit longer title. Um, and let's see what, how it does. So if I wanted to turn this into a article, right. Or a blog post, and then literally that blog post, you can take some bits and pieces of that blog post and turn it into a social media post. And then they also have social media posts in here too, but it all depends. Like, you know, how you do your writing and then what you do. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit enter. See what happens. Oh, see, now it's on fire. She's so fast now. <laughs> yeah, not before it was all freaking slow. So, doo -doo -doo. so this one generated an outline. This is going to get into the writing. It might. Sometimes it does the outline. And then basically what happens is like right after it does the story or whatever. That's it. Oh, look at this. I love how it divides it into sections so you can write it yourself if you really want to. I love that. Mm -hmm. Because I personally like writing. Not everybody does, right? But I do. I freaking hate writing. <laughs> yeah, I love writing. I don't know. Like, I've always had, like, a, a thing with writing. I just like to write things down, and I don't know. I like the creativity and the idea parts of things. That's funny yeah. to me. But look at that. So, you know, I'm, I'm like that too. I, I like the like creativity, the ideas and like, I don't know, for, when it comes to writing, I could write for days and days and days. When it comes to other things, like, you know, making listings for my products, for my stores, I'm like, Ugh. or like actually <laughs> like, fulfilling, like I don't mind printing. So like I print in my own print shop and then mm -hmm. I have like the, the wood shop for the sign business too, right? I don't yeah. mind any of that work. I just, I don't know, man. I'm like, I'm, I feel like... I feel like there's better use of my time than physically producing things, you know, mm -hmm. like, so I feel like it's one of those things, like in any business, you have the things that you really, really love. And then you have the things that like, not so much. I yeah. love the designing of things and like the creativity parts of them. And then when it comes to the actual like doing of those things, I'm like, I want to do it like three times and I want somebody else to do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, for sure. Yeah, no. I think, yeah, I think everyone has their own, like, you know, their own do's and their like don'ts like i don't want to do this yeah. i do want to do this <laughs> exactly it's always how it is and it's different things for different people you know like like this is crazy right here because like this can be done in so many different ways right mm -hmm. you can turn this into like a carousel post on you know your instagram or your facebook you or even turn just this into a mini course man yeah. like straight up it's all done like like all this is all this if all this is done for you already like it's crazy and then it went into more detail about the whole like everything mm -hmm. and it just like it just like summarized everything that i talked about in this video over here you don't you know what i mean <laughs> and it's crazy so i just took the title of my video and let's say if i want to make a put it into a blog post i can and just come back right over here you know copy this edit a few things inside of here uh, maybe write a little bit more detail about certain things right and that's the thing see like if you want to be like certain pieces like it won't get it all the way it'll tell you a little bit but if you want to take the time to come in there or hire somebody or find somebody to help you do this and write a little bit more detail and kind of optimize it a little bit more for seo um and it can all be done right 
But the cool thing is, is that it did pretty much all the heavy lifting for you and give you the whole, like the outline, right? And, like you can just go right over this, like, okay, we need to write a little bit more here, 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 and here. And then we can add it and we can create another paragraph and then add some more into here and then edit a few words for each paragraph. You know, we want to put some, want it to be a little bit more SEO friendly and bam, done. So we just knocked out the blog post and then this, you know, literally social media, like this is going to be a social media post, you know, and, um, and rinse and repeat after that. Okay. Exactly. So this is, so Mary Ann Marlowe says, just joining, is this the paid version of chat GPT chat no. or the free version? It's the free version. This one's free. Mm -hmm. Mary free. This one's free. I know. Okay. This one I hear there's a, um, this is a good question. Okay. Um, there's AI out there too, as well, that you can, you can like mimic a human being. And that's one way to like, are you seeing a lot of people using like faceless videos or creating videos, mimicking human beings with the AI and they're talking and they look pretty, pretty good. Right. And sometimes some of the channels are not getting monetized, but most of the people are not trying to get monetized on YouTube. What they're doing is driving traffic to their affiliate links. Right. So there's so many different ways that you can drive traffic to an affiliate link. And, um, and like, like, is it called Pictionary? Right. And that, that does like a lot of B roll and like voiceover type stuff. So you can add the audio to it and you're like talking. And, and I've seen people that are just cranking out shorts on YouTube cranking out these type of videos on, on TikTok and, and that, that, you know, that short form piece of content, make it 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And then they're using chat GTP to generate content ideas and then just having 30, 40, 50 videos done. in like, like, I don't know, like a few days. Right. And that's crazy because it's just like, wow, can that be done? And I, I guess it can. And I'm seeing people that are getting good results with that and haven't tested it yet, but I do want to test it. Um, uh, okay. What is the right tier? Should I start publishing evergreen designs on Amazon on, on merch by Amazon because I only upload trends and I'm at tier two K and it's, and still publishing trends. Uh, when it comes to this is pretty much it's up to you. Like what you want to do. Like if you're tired of chasing the trends and you want to do evergreen, like if you have the room for it, start doing it. And I would start with the niches that you are like interested in and you're having fun with. Okay. Don't, um, don't like try to jump into something that you don't understand and then create designs in there understand the designs that you're creating for the, for your audience or your target audience. And then, you know, go from there. Um, I think that's one of the ways that you can stand out from your competition. Yeah. I think that, and I think it's super key, right? Like the understanding part is the part that so many people trip over and, and mess up on. And it's like, for real, it, it's necessary for you to have a full understanding of the niche that you're coming into, like the aesthetic that you're designing for, what would be funny and what would not be funny. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To people in that that niche, because I find like lots of people just looking to make a quick buck. They just come into a niche, not knowing anything about it. They just throw up a, a rip off design, like a quick copy looks way worse than the one that's already, you know, selling pretty well, or some of the other ones that are selling pretty well. And then they sit there and they go, oh, well, why am I not making any money? And it's like, well, because you're doing it wrong. That's as simple as it gets, right? So mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the question here, like whether it's like evergreen or trends, to our point, it's 100% up to you what you spend your time doing. I can tell you honestly, whatever lights you up, whatever makes you excited is going to be the one that you want to keep focusing on because there are times in all of our businesses where we have things that we like to do and things that we don't like to do. And sometimes some of those things that we even like to do become things we don't like to do when we're <laughs> pressured in terms of like our time, you know? And so if you really like doing the trends and that like that gets you excited to get into your Amazon account and be uploading things and, and trying new things over there, then stick in that lane. If you're dabbling, you're like, okay, I like the trends. I've got a good baseline on, in terms of sales on those trends. Let me try some evergreen stuff and see how I like it. Just, you know, to AJ's point, do what lights you up, do what's interesting to you um, and do the things that you understand because that's going to bring the most value. Yep. 100% agree. All right. So next one. Good, 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 good topic right there. Write a promotion, pr write promotional emails. Yeah. Um, I have one prompt already pulled up. You want right. to check? Well, let's get in. Let's, All right. Let's okay. All right. <laughs> Let me show you right over here. So where the heck is it? Where'd you go? There you are. Okay. 
Um, right here, create eye catching email for promoting anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Product or service. What would be the product or service that you want to do? If we, let's do like an affiliate, like affiliate that way more people can, um, like relate, you know, that way mm -hmm. they can have an idea. Maybe they can do something with it. Um, yeah. Why not? Cause that's the thing. So like get, so it's an email blast that's promoting something that you've got affiliate links for. Now, what is it? What type of thing that we have affiliate links for? Is it like a software, a service, or yeah. are we going to use one of the videos? Um, I'm going to say like, uh, I say one right now that like I don't have nothing to do with this, but the Pictionary AI. Okay, cool. You're seeing this right here. Over. Can you see my screen? Pictionary AI. We'll use that. We'll just use uh, Pictionary AI. Okay, that's it. Okay. I have nothing. Haven't done anything for them yet, but this is just an idea. But I've thought about creating content on for YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then obviously driving traffic. The idea behind this, guys, is like it can be anything. It doesn't have to be this. It does, this is just, just an idea. Okay. Um, let's say you're promoting a uh, software that you enjoy, like uh, Everbee, right? You're promoting mm -hmm. the software from, you want to do Everbee? Yeah, sure. Let's do Everbee. Okay. Everbee. And let's kind of give them an insight of the, what that is. Come over here, Google Everbee. Okay. Enter. All right. So it, it's a Etsy profitable, profitable product finder. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is Everbee. So we're going to come over here. I have nothing to do with them. I've tested them out a little bit. D showed me a lot with them, which is really cool. And they do um, do a lot. Okay. Funny. Okay. Everbee. Yeah, so basically what Everbee does, just real quick, for mm -hmm. Etsy specifically, um, it basically helps you find, you know, the high ranking, like high selling listings in your category on Etsy so that you can kind of start to compare and contrast what is working for a different seller and is maybe not working for you or could be working better for you. Um, or if you are the the kind of the person to beat on Etsy, it helps you compare and contrast what is working the best and and make a decision about what you should lean into more in terms of the listings in your store, right? So that being said, it is a paid tool. I think it's like $29 a month, I want to say, like 29 US or something. Um, but it gives you the titles, the tags, the keywords, and it gives you estimates about what certain listings um, are making in terms of sales volumes. And it gives you estimates on like daily views that certain listings are getting. So it's a very like good tool to use if you're trying to expand or grow on Etsy. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily say if you're beginning, it's, it's the smartest to be paying for these paid tools like this. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot faster ways to get started when you're beginning and start making money before you start shelling out for these paid tools. But for sure, it's, it's definitely something worth doing. So um, Everbee to, to RJ's point here has an affiliate program. So let's say we were affiliating for Everbee and we were going to try and drive some traffic to our affiliate link, site, some signups for Everbee so we could get paid as part of their affiliate program. This is what we would be doing. We'd be rewriting a promotional email, driving people to Everbee using our affiliate link. So that's what RJ is about to do inside of the chat GPT tool here. What did you say? You said it was twenty nine. Yeah, that's twenty nine a month. I'm pretty sure. So we eight dollars and seventy cents per person signed up, right? And this is just an idea. Okay, we have to so twenty nine. So we need we need four people to sign up under our affiliate link in order for it to we know whatever. So we'll generate or eight. So what the hell did I just do? I'm breaking stuff on here. Time. So <laughs> oh my god. All right. So in the meantime, uh, Marianne's uh, asking a question, so we'll, we'll move on to her while you fix this up real quick. <laughs> So she's, so, saying, she's saying, what, is it possible to let the bot teach you what it is capable of doing, especially if you're not tech savvy and you're just getting started? So it is possible, Marianne, like you can just go in, it's a free tool, right? So like you just, you have to sign up for an account. Once you have your free account, you can just go in there and start playing, right? Like when you say to let it teach you on the very home screen of basically chat GPT, um, so RJ's looks a little bit different because he's got that extension in there, that AI PRM, but on the first page, when you first log in, it basically tells you what you can do with it. It, it gives you a, a little synopsis of the kinds of things that you can ask it. And it kind of tells you that post 2021, it doesn't have a lot of real life, um, like knowledge of anything post 2021, but 
like for all of these other things, it can be answering a bunch of your questions. And, and to be honest, 2021 is still kind of relevant in terms of a lot of the different niches that we would be discussing um, or doing work for inside of ChatGPT anyway, mm -hmm. right? So that being said, you could start it how I started it. So like I was not somebody who used um, AI tools very often. Like RJ had shown me Jasper a few years back and I thought it was really cool. And I got in there myself and started playing with it a little bit. But I was like, you know, I feel like honestly, sometimes when you're a solo entrepreneur or a very small business owner where you've only got like maybe like a team of under five or five or less, there's always so many things to be doing that like it can honestly fall off your radar if you don't make time to learn mm -hmm. these tools and, and tricks and things, right? So what yeah. I started doing for me that helped me was like, I literally just started making like a 20 minute window in my schedule to just go in and play with chat GPT. And then I started like searching for the term chat GPT in the Facebook groups that I'm in for the niches that I wanted to be, you know, using the tool for. And a whole bunch of ideas come up that way. Like, especially if you're in any um, groups with other sellers, like if you mm -hmm. search for chat GPT, you'll see that a lot of content comes up about how other sellers are using it, which can also give you ideas and help you learn um, yeah. how to use it. I think when push really comes to shove, the the prompts are what really are going to make or break your experience with chat GPT. I think it's important to prompt it as mm -hmm. succinctly and as um, clearly as possible so that you get to the end result that you're really looking for. Um, and that only comes with time and practice, honestly, yeah. like it's not going to be a course that teaches you how to write perfect prompts every single, maybe there is actually, there's probably going to be a course like that. <laughs> there is. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to say straight, yeah. I find for me, like the easier way is just getting into the tool, getting your hands dirty in there a little bit. And just like thinking it's out of the box. So whether it's emails that you're using it for, whether it's coming up with 10 different design ideas for your wall art download store, whatever it might be. Yeah. No, no. And then, uh, so one thing that I was trying to do over there before I was over here messing up stuff and pressing different buttons. So you need, so for example, let's say that you're, you know, you're doing some email promotions and you're trying to do affiliate marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Um you need uh, four people to sign up to make, to pay for that $29 a month. So you think about it that way at 34 you'll make $34 and 80 cents. You're in the profit by like what? $5. And um, let's have it write this email for us and see, you know, we're talking about this product, right? And so, so someone you create like a, where you're trying to drive traffic, you create a video on this, right? And then you create like a free download and off of that free download, they go into your email list. And this is what I'm hoping for that you'll get like day one, email day two email day three email then you get like 100 people signed up and then you use the email list to can help them help convert them into you know your affiliate link and you make money that way so here it is let's see what happens i have never tried this out before we write some good emails i've been i've been playing with this um for the emails okay mm -hmm. like and you can even tell it so like you can tell it write an email and use the placeholders from Yotpo or SMS bump or whatever. And it will find those placeholders and it will use them appropriately. So you can literally just copy and paste into whatever email provider that you're using, whether it's like MailChimp, Clavio, you know, um, there's so many convert kit, whatever mm -hmm. it might be, Aweber, <clears throat> you know, whatever you're using, basically it can be tailored to write those emails specifically for those, or you can go in and add those short codes and things in after as well. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I think, uh, yeah, there's, there's like, in, 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 to adding to that, there's like, there's not just one email provider that you can use, right? There's several different, like, what do you call those? What'd you say? What'd you call them? Yeah. Email providers, basically. Email providers. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. Like, you can use a bunch, but each of them have their own little nuances. As somebody who's used almost all of them, I'm telling you, like, they're so different from one another a lot of the times. And mm -hmm. so it's nice when you have a tool that you can tell it to use the short codes from X or from Y tool, and it's going to write them out for you properly. So in this case, it's kind of written this email in a first person voice. Like mm -hmm. you're the person that's talking directly to the other person on the other side of the email, which is a strategy to use. I don't know necessarily that it would be the strategy unless yeah. you, your, your specific audience that you're sending this email to 
um, is like maybe a coaching group or something like you coach people privately. So this would be perfect for that because then it's a one-on-one -on -one experience when you're in their email, they think they're talking directly to you when really they're talking to an automated stream that you put together kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, so in this case, we've got, you know, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to take a moment to introduce you to an exciting new tool that I believe could be a game changer for your business, introducing Everbe Profitable Product Finder. Are you tired of spending countless hours searching for profitable products to sell? Look no further than Everbe Profit Profitable Product Finder. That's like a tongue twister. <laughs> Everbe Profitable Product Finder. I'm going to have to like say that it loud. Welcome. Times. Welcome to my life. Right. Um, <laughs> our user-friendly platform allows you to quickly and easily identify high demand products with the potential for high profit margins, right? So basically it's it's readiness like as though it, it feels kind of like promotional. It feels salesy a little bit. Um, you could come in here and edit it, but like mm -hmm. the bones of it are there for that one-on-one -on -one communication. You can even tell it to write as though you're speaking to a group of people and it will tweak that email to write it in a different voice as well. Okay. And so that's kind of the thing. Like to your point. So Marianne says, there is so much, I don't know how to do any of it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there is so much and I don't know how to do any of it. This is my main struggle. And I feel like honestly, this this becomes a struggle of like lots of people, Not yet. like lots of people. It's called shiny object syndrome, right? Like there's tons of things that we could be learning and spending our time doing that could be helping us in our business or that we could just end up going down rabbit holes and wasting lots of time on it that don't actually move the, the needle in our businesses at all. So I feel like when it's any tool, like so for you specifically, Marianne, we are coming into a tool like ChatGPT, before you even sit down at the computer and start trying to play with it, try to think of what you need in your business, okay? Like, so for me, I kind of needed a way to cut certain tasks, like cut down the time that I was spending on those certain tasks considerably so that I could like free up some time in my schedule to spend it on other tasks, okay? So I was saying to RJ recently and in our private group, Ready and Scale, um, it's a paid membership group. We do a meeting and I was kind of explaining to people how I have used chat GPT to create an Excel macro that helps me with the workflow in my sign business. So all of my orders on my sign business come through my Shopify website. And then I have to export those orders from the Shopify website into a, a spreadsheet. And then I have to format that spreadsheet so that basically my husband, Dan, knows what he's going to build in the shop every single week for the orders, okay? And so that process of downloading or exporting the orders from Shopify and then creating this spreadsheet in the way that my husband needed to see it so that he would be very clear on all of the products that were going out the door the following week would take me roughly two hours every single week, okay? Mm -hmm. and. So what I did was I came into chat GPT and I thought, you know what, there's got to be a better way. So if I can write a macro that will format most of this for me, and then I just have to do like, you know, 20 minutes of labor as, as opposed to two hours of labor or 30 minutes of labor, that's going to free up time. And with that extra hour and a half, maybe then I can be spending time on my other projects that I need. So, so how I started like how I chose that as my starting place was I had written down a bunch of the areas that I needed the help with. So like what was sucking my time, like doing mock-ups for certain things, doing this order sheet, having to answer questions because I've entered something wrong on the order sheet, all of that kind of stuff is eating my time. Right. And so by making that macro, I minimized the opportunity for me to make a mistake and enter something incorrectly because now the macro is doing it all for me every single time consistently. Right. And then I have that extra hour and a half now to do something else. So I was actually using chat GPT to write me an email sequence because I wanted all of my new customers to be put on a on an email so that we could continue to talk to them after they'd placed that first purchase, right? So this is what I mean. Like sometimes when we're talking about how to make money, like what I've just explained there, people are, will be like, oh, well, you didn't make any money by making that macro. Well, no, I didn't, but I saved myself, let's call it an hour and a half every single week. And with that hour and a half, then I, 
I spent that time that first week creating an email program that will bring in money, right? So it's like, that's how I'm using chat GPT. I'm sandwiching, I'm using it to like remove barriers in my business and then open up my time to spend to spend time focusing on other areas where I can drive revenue. Okay. Yeah, no, no. Um, I think uh, when it comes to, like I said, it's like a writing tool. So once you understand that, like it's, it's a yeah big time saver. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So you got to think about it. Like, how is it going to assist you in your day-to-day -day business and, and help you as an individual make more money or be more productive, right? Cause if you're more productive, you're going to get more done, more done. You, get, you make more money, right? And yeah. that's the way that we're talking about. It's not like, oh yeah, copy this, copy this, copy this. Oh, I'm done for the day. You know, like, so what are you going to do to produce more and, and, and get more work done? And then we get more work done, you make more money. Well, and I think that that's the other thing too. I think this is another shortcut and people aren't even recognizing it as this, but there are so many projects that maybe you want to start in your business, but they take a lot of time, okay? So mm -hmm. like, a, for instance, if you want a whole other line of products, in your store. Now you have to do all these mock-ups for those. You have to find like the right pictures or take your own pictures. You have to research to figure out like, so let's say you, you sell shirts, right? And now you're trying mm -hmm. to get into mugs, right? Yeah. It's a whole different ball game in terms of like what you're going to put on those mugs, what kind of designs are appropriate for mugs versus shirts, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So if you come into using chat GPT with your existing store, Okay, you can actually give it a link to your existing store and say, give me 10 ideas for um, sayings on a mug that will be similar to what I sell in this store. Okay, mm -hmm. and then boom, it's going to dump out 10 different ideas for you to make for those like graphics for that mug. Right. So if you had had to sit there yourself and figure, okay, like, let me come up with 10 different ideas. Who knows how long that might've taken you, given that this is not something that you've done before, right? Like you haven't sold mugs before. So you're like, I don't really know where to start. So you now just use that to, to save yourself some time. And then if you spend the next amount of your time making those 10 designs, getting them all live in the shop, and then like you have some data about like favorites, clicks, sales, whatever, come a month from now, then you have just found another little little mini companion product or side niche or whatever that you can start adding into to continue making that money, right? So at the end of the day, it's like you can use this for research in a variety of different ways. I just say when you're starting out with any new tool, look at where like your project list is. Like all of us as business owners have this list of things that we want to be doing in our stores, but that we're not finding always the right amount of time to be consistent with. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you look at that, you look at the things that are the actions that you're taking that are eating most of your time. And then you start to think, okay, well, what can I use chat GPT for that'll make some of that easier or make some of that go faster? You're already on the right track. And then as you continue to use the tool, it just gets better and better from there because you've gotten better at the prompts you're giving it. You've got better at the expectations in terms of what you want to get from it. And then you've, you've gotten better at just really minimizing a lot of your tasks so that you can be spending more time and effort and focus on the tasks that actually generate the revenue. Right. Yep. No, um, help. Um, uh, like that was the first thing it was like, when I first heard about this tool, it's like, what is it that I need to learn first to help me better understand the tool? And the first thing I heard was like prompts, prompts, prompts. I'm like, okay obviously i got to learn how to write prompts right and the only way that you're going to do that is one learning from other people or two just testing it out yourself okay you're not just going to figure out different prompts um and that there's a tool right there that we shared um inside of uh it's a google chrome extension check that out and that's the one i'm using right here that i'm sharing with you guys as we're doing <clears throat> doing the content and there's different prompts and if you guys are getting value out of this video make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up because it helps um and Let's go over here. We're going to do some last one right here. Research for t-shirt designs in your niche. Okay. So what I did, I was came, I came over here. Let me, let me share my screen one more time. Right there, right there. And then we'll finish this one up and then we're going to go ahead and call it. Um, if you come over here, let me, let me zoom us out. Get us the heck out of there. Um, I said, can you help me with t-shirt design niche research with St. Patrick's day? 
I just just wanted to see. You know, this is a, just a this is not. I'm not using none of the prompts here, but I'm just testing it out and seeing what it can do um, with you know different design ideas for St. Patrick's Day. Okay, let's see. Mm. Hmm. Okay. And then literally ten. Honey, Saints, St. Patrick's Day. I'm just like kind of just in funny sayings for St. Patrick's Day. I'm just kind of coming up with different ideas as I'm looking at that. Okay, um, let's go back up. But it just gave us an insight, right? The insight of what St. Patrick's Day is, you know, what people are doing, you know, that day and the culture behind it, right? Which is really, really powerful. Do you still there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm just making sure it was quiet. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm making sure I didn't log off or nothing like that. Um, St. Patrick's Day, right? It's March 17th every year. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go into like, you know, there's, there's different celebrations. We know that. There's a lot of uh, partying going on, parades, right? Foods and drinks. You can see, as, as it's saying right here, um, now Irish pride. Okay. And then there's humor. Okay. Sports. Obviously there's certain things that we can't, we obviously can't create a t-shirt design with bo the Boston Celtics basketball team. Right. Unless right. you obviously have the rights. Right. Um, and just being careful with certain, you know, elements of characters that we use um, with this, but for the most part, uh, which is crazy because this right here, like when it comes to this, I've seen a few people share uh, in the, in the Facebook group, uh, like the mid journey and the different type of characters, um, like little leprechauns that are being created. And they're like, Hey, if you can find this somewhere on the internet, I'll give you a thousand dollars. And and this is one of its own, right? This is one of one. And I thought it was really cool. Cause it's just like, you can see how people are using this to their advantage to create, you know, awesome, you know, awesome designs with mid journey, but this is the starting point, right? Like you can see like the research that's pretty much already all done and like getting the idea. This should break. You should be brainstorming right now. This kind of, and then you can take this, right. This idea, uh, and just go over to Amazon and do research and start doing searches or Etsy or whatever, your, whatever platform that you'd like to come up and see how people are, are creating designs like Irish pride. You know what I mean? Um, there's a hashtag or even going on to Instagram to see what hashtags people are using. Cause I'm pretty sure if you type in Irish pride on Instagram, you're going to see people wearing different types of shirts, right? Which mm -hmm. is really, really cool. Um, now, if I come down, 10 different saints for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day. Kiss me. I'm Irish. I'm vaccinated. Um, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer green ones. That's cool. <laughs> I see. I see. I see what's going on here. Hmm. Hmm. You may want to check it though, you know, see if it's trademarked or anything. I know it's coming from that uh Dosaki's commercial, right? Yeah. That's where you're kind of getting it from. But I can see, you know, but I think this this is a good one. That's a good one. Um, but you can see, like, and then like if you don't even like these 10 ideas, you can do uh you can say, you know, can you generate another right. 10 ideas, right? Yeah. Or regenerate, or I think you said regenerate the response and it will do another 10. Okay. Um but this is one way just to just come into a new niche and just like understand, okay, first it's telling us about it and we're learning about it. And then I'm like, okay, can you give me 10 different sayings um, about this niche or funny sayings or humor? Cause it said humor right up here, humor, mm -hmm. right? Funny humor. Um, and boom, that's what it did. Powerful. Boom. All right. So that's it. We gave okay. you like we've been on way longer than we intended to. We be we were trying to be on here for like thirty minutes to chat with y'all, and now we're, <laughs> we're we're going on like double that time, almost an hour here. But we hit all five. So five easy ways to make money using Chat GPT, KDP, lower no content books. Use it to write your blog posts with your affiliate links. 
Use it to write your social captions, driving people into your stores. Use mm -hmm. it for email blasts or automated emails that go out to your customers, either keeping you top of mind with them if they haven't made purchases or reminding them to come back in or just promoting something that you're affiliating. And yeah. then t-shirt design and research, right? Just use it to research different ideas for your niches, whether that be keyword research, whether that be design research, or whether it be some combination of the two. Yeah. Um, those are five easy ways that you can be using ChatGPT to make money. If you like this video, obviously drop a like uh, or subscribe on RJ's YouTube because I know it's over there being live. Also, <laughs> we do have, of course, our paid membership group, Ready Aim Scale. Mm -hmm. It's only 20 bucks a month to join us over there. And then you get specific help with your specific business. Um, we go live once every two weeks and we have a essentially a group meeting where you can ask us any of your questions. And then we do a separate part where you can drop in your specific store links and we can just take a deep dive on your store, giving you ideas about how to improve your sales or really how to maybe change some things up to just increase um, your overall success on whatever platforms that you're trying to sell on. So if that mm -hmm. sounds cool, that sounds dope, come join us over there. Um, there's a whole Slack community in the background there where you can ask your questions and people will help you out. We have yep. like victories, people celebrate with each other. We have fails where we all laugh at each other <laughs> as ways that we failed epically. Like we had so many fun things and we have a whole tra training library back there of videos that are still relevant about how you can do a variety of things, whether it's like, you know, your design research, whatever, whatever it is that you might specifically want. So mm -hmm. check that, check that out, ready, aim, scale. Um, and then we got what? one more question and then we we're, we're going to peace mm -hmm. out. So the last question we got here is, do you recommend Printify or Printful and why? No. Oh, um when it comes to these two um it's per it's like a personal preference up to you okay i'm not gonna say and sit here and um i'm not gonna bash no other business or anything like that but when it comes to any of this stuff you have to understand like it's like what is it like how what when you're testing it and you're doing it and you're ordering your products what's the personal experience that you're getting from the company itself okay mm -hmm. and that's all up to you i think printify and printful are very good companies okay um if you go and you search for certain things that you're going to find certain things about them, but for the most part, they're, they're kicking, they're kicking butt and they're, and they're doing their thing. Okay. Um, they're really awesome companies and they've been in the game for, for years now. Right. And uh, you, that's something that you can't take away from a business was they're still going, they're still going. Uh, one is so Printify is more of like the soft, a software too, as well. It's more of like the middleman, like, you know, like hotels.com. It's like that for print on demand for or, or print providers. Okay. So they'll take like a, a local printer and connect with them and then they'll connect you with them and then they'll print the shirt and ship it to the customer for you. Okay. Printful, they're actually printing all their own shirts in their own facilities and getting them to the customers to, for you as fast as possible. Okay. So that's the difference between the two, um, but they're both good companies and they, they respond to you. If you have any issues or anything like that, they're on top of it. Yeah. For me, I like to print printify for certain um niches and i liked printful for others so like a, for instance i really love the printed pillows at printful um and the leggings at printful i think that they they wash up be beautifully like i literally have had probably three pairs of printful leggings since probably around 2018 and just last year they started to fade and wash just yeah. last year so like all the way, 100%, I'm going to go with Printful for stuff like that. Printify, to RJ's point, is more of a software than it is the actual end result, right? So Printify, to his point, hooks you up with local printers. Um, you get to pick which printers you're supporting and working with. And then from there, basically, you can try it a variety of different people that sell the kinds of colors or um, brands of shirt that you want to be stocking in your store. It's not just one, like, and result it's a variety of different people that you can try all of them have different star ratings all that kind of stuff so it's definitely something to think through um i think for ease of use printful was the the easy starting place and for me the reason is because they do own all of their own facilities and because they do all of their own production um they have more control over a lot of those things Right. So um, you might run into a little bit of a problem with Printify if, like, let's say one of the print providers has stock that's delayed or stuff like that. Like, you're not going to run into that same problem as easily over on Printful. But again, 
each is fine. Um, it's just up to you to choose, you know, what works best mm -hmm. for you. There, I wouldn't say it, there is a better one, honestly, Marianne. Steve, he said, been following you guys since 2018. These AI, AI tools are powerful. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Steve. And yeah, yeah Thanks, Steve. I think that's, thank you very much. Yeah, no, I think that's going to be it right there, guys. We are uh, hour and four minutes or we're supposed to be 30. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, everything's good right there. Um, the replays are going to be up. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, one thing I want to touch on with Vassar and Marion, like any of these platforms, right? There's always, there's so many different things that you can do. Okay. As far as, uh, digital marketing, affiliate marketing, um, and, uh, digital marketing agency, build your own website or POD. So many different things that you can do. Just pick one, get to $500, set a goal, $500, start it off real simple, easy to figure out how you're going to get there. You get to the 500 or a thousand or two, whatever your goal is, get there. And then once you get there, then if you're bored, right, <laughs> and then you go start something. This that's the power of working online. If you're bored, then you can go do something else. Okay. For the most part, with like these search engine platforms, right? You can put a design up like on Amazon merch, you can put a design up and it'll be live for years and it can make sales and it can generate, you know thousands and thousands of dollars every single month for you. And you can work on something else in the, at the same time. This is why I create content because I'm able to do that type of stuff. So yeah. All right. That's it. All right, guys, you have a good week ahead. Good weekend and yeah. bye. Peace. Bye.